Super aficionados, this is Realm Warrior. We have been summoned. We have been brought back from our hiatus. I was staying away because, well, actually, I was staying away because I wanted to get a, a new studio set up before I started making these videos again. Uh, however, I found better software than what we had before that works better at background removal. So, it's a little, I mean, it's got my chair here. Whoop de doo I can, I can deal with that. But it seems to be working way better than my previous videos as far as being able to see. Do a little. We're gonna do some some changes here on how we format this stuff. So hopefully it looks a little bit better, and we can talk about more things. But anyhow, uh, the important thing is what we're talking about. We have to talk about these things. The world of fantasy and fiction is once more under threat from the weirdos and the creeps. So as the defender of all things fiction and fantasy, it's time for me to get back into the game and start whooping some backside. This is getting ridiculous here. All right, so we got two videos already on the slate because we had, strangely enough, two stories in the past two days. I don't know what all this two stuff, but anyhow, uh, two stories, two days. So we got two videos we need to build. This, of course, is the first one. We'll have a second one maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, hopefully not for too much longer, but the first one I want to hit on, and the reason I would decided to go with this one first is because uh the level of stupidity in this is just almost completely off the scales this is ridiculously stupid from what i've been gathering so this one i think i want to dig more onto i think it's faster i should say easier for me to to, to just rip it a new one whereas the other one you know, i could be going on for hours so hopefully this one is a little bit short a little bit faster than my normal videos but we'll see now what are we talking about? Well, if you saw my little video thingy up there, you know, the name of the video, obviously you had to click on it to get the video to work, right? Uh, we're going to be talking about Hogwarts Legacy. I don't know, the camera shifted a little bit, just bear with me. We're trying to make this thing all pretty and fancy. New toys, new toys. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, brand new video game. I think it actually just released today. I saw a notification saying it had been released today. Don't care. Uh, this is something that had been on my radar as existing for a while now. Now, originally when I heard about it, I thought it was going to be like a cell phone game or something, you know, one of them, you know, mobile games, you know, smartphones or tablets, something like that. Uh, and then I found out, no, this is supposed to be a full-fledged PC game. I'm like, All right, cool. Now, was I interested in buying it? Eh, well, actually a little bit, yes, because, well, let's back this up. I am not one of those Harry Potter nuts that you know grew up on harry potter i mean i didn't even read harry potter up until like a few years ago yeah probably about six years ago i think it was hadn't seen the movies until that time uh, so i was well into my young adult life if you will uh before i read them never read them never saw the movies uh, because of the same things you know you normally hear from from the religious side of life us. Uh, uh, how how horrible they are, and, and they're really against the the Catholic faith and all that. Somebody decided to you know just sit me down. You know I watched it uh, with some with some coworkers, and I'm like, I'm not really seeing a problem here. In fact, I think there's some really good storytelling being done. Uh, I think it's got some really good uh, morals in here. Uh, I'm not going to say, you know, a lot of people will, will compare the, the, the Potterverse, as it's referred to, uh, the Harry Potter stuff. They'll compare that to either uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe books, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, or they'll compare it to Lord of the Rings. Now, obviously, I'm going to prefer those. Uh, you've got both of those that were set up straight as allegories for Christian faith mostly catholic faith but there's you know some some slight differences which is fine it's all allegory is 
Uh, Harry Potter doesn't have that. All right, it doesn't fit perfectly into that religious theme. Um, in fact, there are, and I'm going to talk about that, you know, more in depth as as the video progresses here. Uh, there were some things that I saw, you know, in the books more so than in the movies. Uh, it was I just kind of felt it was weird, that was off. I was trying to make an allegory out of it, couldn't. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if that was really the intention or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyhow. And so we have uh, Hogwarts uh, Legacy being the latest, uh, well, video game in the Potter verse. Now they've had a few of them out there over time. You I mean you had the the Lego video games, uh, you had little Game Boy games, but they all revolved around the movies. Primarily the movies, technically the books as well, but mostly just the movies. Uh, and then they came out with a phone game to try to rival with Pokemon Go. It was called uh, Wizards Unite or Wizards United or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the title was. Uh, I had it. Um, it was kind of you know a similar thing. You walk around wherever you physically are, go out and and catch mystical creatures or you would get attacked by I guess mystical creatures and you had to expel them uh weird game uh I like the the combat in that more than Pokemon Go because Pokemon Go you know pretty much you didn't have any kind of combat um unless you you know went into like the little raid battles or whatever nonsense whereas uh with Wizards Unite, you cast certain, each each creature had a certain spell you had to cast against it, the, the better you did, uh, you know, the more likely you're going to expel the bad thing as opposed to it escaping, I can't remember. I can't remember all the, the things, you know, I played it for a little bit just to kind of get familiar with it, it just wasn't really my thing. Uh, none of those are, because that would require me to, you know, leave. I don't want to be walking around town with my phone going, ooh, look, I got a you know, whatever the fat, I don't know. Uh, it's just not my thing, but I wasn't against the game's concepts. I wasn't against the program. None of that it was fine. Just not my speed, not my style. Perfectly okay. And uh, that game was obviously, well, set in the modern day, because, you know, it's you, you're the player. Uh, but it was obviously after... Uh, what had occurred in the books, the movies. So they're all adults now. Uh, Hermione, I think she was the Minister of Magic. Uh, Harry Potter was one of the uh, or Aurors. So for those of you who know nothing about Harry Potter, don't worry, got you. All right? I'm not one of those people that you know, just like I'm going to be spouting out random things and hope you know what Harry Potter is, and then you have to Google. You have to Google search. You guys should know by now. I ain't, I ain't that kind of person. I'm going to get you the info. So obviously, we have the main character, the Harry Potter, in in the books. He's a kid. Uh, basically, throughout the entire series, he's constantly having to deal with uh, this really, really evil wizard known by the name of Voldemort. Uh, well, Lord Voldemort. And you find out that that's a pseudonym. He really, you know, was this kid named Tom Riddle. I don't remember his, his middle name. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyhow, and this guy, you know, it's like the super evilest bad guy ever. Like in the history of all the Wizarding World, he's the most evil bad guy ever. And he's constantly going around killing people. When he kills Harry Potter's parents and then goes to kill Harry Potter, his spell rebounds and kills the bad guy sort of ish and so the guy is basically always is this constant theme of him trying to get back into power and eventually he does temporarily uh, hermione granger is one of the friends of harry potter she's uh very very smart uh book wise uh not so good with people um very very much a rule follower uh, and then, of course, you have uh, Ron Weasley, Ronald Weasley, who's Harry Potter's best friend, comes from a big family. There's a whole bunch. Of, I mean, I could go for a while into the Harry Potter stuff, but those are the three main characters most people care about. 
Uh, like I said, there's Voldemort, the main bad guy, and then there is uh, Dumbledore, who's the headmaster of Hogwarts, which it, for, again, people who don't know Jack about Harry Potter, Hogwarts is the school where all these wizards and witches uh, gather and, and learn. It's basically a boarding school, so they're there like nine months out of the year or something like that. And of course, all this is being set in England. Yeah, if For those of us who are full-on Americans, a lot of the terminology in the books kind of don't make sense. A lot of the reasons why they do certain things don't make sense. And you just, you know, we, we kind of have to deal with it, you know, as, as uh, Americans. We just kind of read it, translate it. Sorry, my thing went off. I'm not sure if it recorded or not. It wasn't supposed to, but we'll see. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Dumbledore is the is the the headmaster. So that's basically like the uh, superintendent of schools, as well as principal. Anyhow, there's this there's all kinds of like little political things going on there. But overall, the stories were pretty good. They were pretty decent. Now, Hogwarts Legacy, the new video game, you know, the whole reason for me making this video in the first place, I'm trying not to get myself lost here, is supposed to take place like a hundred some odd years before all the events in the Harry Potter books. Uh, it's supposed to take some place in the 1800s. Now, I think they just kind of threw a dart at 1800s somewhere in there. I don't think they get real specific as to when in the 1800s, you know, if it's the 1850s, the you know, 1890s, uh, whatever. Don't know? Don't care. The fact that it's in the 1800s is very important to everything. Uh, the reason I'm making the video at all. Uh, we have... Uh, I, I, shoot, I don't even know what the story is, to be perfectly honest. Uh, because that's not what's important. No, can't be. The story has no importance whatsoever. How fun the game is has no importance whatsoever, according to critics of the video game. I kid you not, right now, they are not concerned with it, and that is BS. And we're going to hit it. Why? So, again, before we get too far, too crazy into this, we also have to worry about who wrote the book or the books. Well, the person who wrote the books is known as J.K. Rowling. And I should have grabbed a picture of J.K. Rowling is uh, currently on the hit list for uh, the tranny crowd, specifically the trannies. All right, the rest of the rainbow crowd, I don't think they give two hoots about her. She's like, oh, no, 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 the, the gays and the lesbians, blah blah blah. But she, right now, she's like, no trannies. Gays fine, lesbians fine, trannies no. I don't know about bisexuals. I don't care about them freaks either. But anyhow, she's she does not like trannies, and she's been just pepper firing at those knuckleheads um she and it's funny to me because she goes out she says says whatever you know on twitter or what have you and they'll freaking descend on her like the horde of vultures that they are and just start pecking away and just attacking her and normally when you see that you sorry sorry i didn't mean to no, don't hurt me up and she's like, mm, bet, and keeps just doubles down and doubles down. It's funny as heck to me to watch because she's not a conservative by any stretch of the imagination. She is an uber lib. Um, in fact, I think one of the funniest things in there when it deals with this whole thing on politics is her Ministry of Magic in the in the books, in the movies, is a um, kind of a a magical counterpart, if you will, uh, of Parliament, you know, of all the, you know, all the bureaucracy that occurs in England. And anyhow, as you read through it, you find that this group, I'm not saying they're necessarily corrupt, but they do have corrupt people in certain departments, which every government has, sure. But one of the things I thought was the absolute funniest was, and it come, the book is, uh, Order of the Phoenix, which I think is, I can never remember the number. I think it's number four or five. Somebody, whoever's like super smart in, in the Harry Potter stuff, he'll, they'll remember whatever. It's, to me, it's not that important. Uh, but anyhow, Order of the Phoenix uh, has basically the school is taken over by the government um, because 
again, there's all this politics going on. People think that uh, Dumbledore, again, the headmaster of the school, um, is teaching things he shouldn't be teaching, namely that there's such a thing as evil in the world and that people should protect themselves from evil. So basically the government takes over school and the whole school just falls apart. Like, it's just trash. Absolute garbage. Nobody cares about what the uh, the Ministry of Magic folks... Well, really, there's only the one uh, who comes in and, and teaches. Um, nobody likes her. Everybody's against her. Even the other teachers are against her. And really, to me, it's like socialism on full display and showing how terrible it is, how much it just doesn't work. And I find it funny... Because the person who wrote it is a liberal, and I don't think she realized that she just wrote that socialism don't work. But hey, again, not overly important. What is important is that J.K. Rowling is now being referred to as a turf, which, for those who don't know, uh, is not talking about grass, uh, but it's instead stands for trans exclusionary radical feminist. So basically, she's one of the liberal snobs except for in this one instance so i don't know is that worse i guess it's worse than being a conservative because well, i guess they feel betrayed or something i don't know but anyhow she has spoken out against the the trannies she's she gets very upset about them uh she talks about all the time and a lot of people brought this up uh on on the conservative side of course that the the trannies are erasing women in the sense that you know they can't even define what a woman is anymore um you have all these uh transgender women aka dudes who think they're chicks uh coming in and taking over spots that were normally held by women i mean you've got the you know best swimmer uh being a dude who thinks he's a chick uh you've got uh was it some some clown running some uh, beauty contest thing. Again, dude thinks he's a chick. It, it just it goes on and on. It's ridiculous. So anyhow, with Hogwarts Legacy, the story right now is that, again, this is happening in the 1800s, and a lot of these, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Critics of the video games, people who want to write at the gamer journalists, which I think is just dumb that these think these guys think they're journalists. I do not consider myself a journalist by any stretch of the imagination. Not because I don't have a degree, but because it's I guess it's technically news, but anything can be news. You know, my cat died. That's news. Does me reporting it make me a journalist? No, not really. It's not news that's really important. So anyhow, with Hogwarts Legacy, it has been basically banned for having hit pieces on it because J.K. Rawlings doesn't like trannies. The game is perfectly fine with trannies. In fact, I kid you not, they are they were kowtowing to the trannies by putting in a transgender character. Uh let's see if I can find the little thing here. I've got like multiple tabs open. Uh yeah, that's right. On the frequently asked questions page or fact page for the game's official website, they straight up start off with a disclaimer saying that JK Rowling was not involved in the creation of the game. Uh they did try to remain true to her Original vision, but the Portkey game developers, Portkey's um, the company that built all the new uh, Hogwarts games, all the new Harry Potter games, um, and it's a reference to one of the objects inside uh, the Potterverse. Uh, Portkey is a random item, usually garbage, which I wonder if these guys remember that much. <laughs> um, but anyhow, it's basically garbage that can transport you from one location to another, and transport a large uh, number of people from one location to another. It's kind of a teleportation thing. Uh, let's see, Porky game developers chart new territory by creating fresh ways for fans to immerse themselves in the wizarding world. 
whoopty freaking do who cares right yeah okay we're we're doing wizard stuff so they decide to throw in a character into the game who's a tranny and oh, i don't have the rest of it dang i actually read like the some of the rest of the stuff in here about them having it uh but anyhow so the Basically, they have this character who is. This doesn't have it either. Dang, I should have pulled the other one up. This is not the one I thought I had. But anyway, I remember it enough that she like runs the, ta the local tavern uh, in the the town not far from Hogwarts, uh, which is called. Now it feels stupid. There's gonna be Harry Potter fans out there mad at me. They can't remember what it's called. The pub is called the Three Broomsticks, and it is Hogmeads. Hogsmead, excuse me, the town of Hogsmead. It's a completely fictional town. Don't worry about looking for it on a map. It doesn't exist. It's just in the, the books, so don't worry about it. But anyhow, it's someone who owns a tavern. I'm pretty sure it's the Three Broomsticks. It don't matter. Uh, but you have this interaction with this character who insists upon the fact that uh, he he was actually a witch, not a wizard. Now, just to clarify, make it simple for everybody, with the Hogwarts world, they straight up said, hey, we are um, having witches equals girls, wizards equal boys. Sometimes they throw in the word warlock every now and again, uh, but very, very rarely. It doesn't seem to really have any true meaning behind it. And... Um, and then, you know, they sometimes say sorcerer and sorceress, I think. I don't really remember. Um, but regardless, it doesn't really matter because they're just straight off the bat. All witches are girls. All wizards are boys. Well, with this essential tranny nonsense, they decide, well, because he was, you know, actually a, a girl trapped in a guy's body, uh, then he's actually a witch. Now, here's the thing that I want to throw into this. And I, I'm rapidly looking through, trying to see if I can find the original article that I read on this. Um, I probably won't quickly enough. It doesn't matter. But anyhow, the, the character, like I said, this is done in the 1800s. The 1800s, where people didn't do these things, all right? Not to say, because, you know, if I put out there, oh, trainees didn't exist in the 1800s. There would be some backlash because, you know, there's like three people who are transgender as opposed to the ten who are transgender today. Uh, but anyhow, the idea of being transgender in the 1800s was pretty much unheard of. You, if you did identify that way, if you were a dude who thought you were a chick or vice versa, you would pretty much just uh, keep it to yourself. You might find that small group of people that were also crazy like that and interact with them by whatever witch magic, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> that you might find out they exist. But there wasn't a community of them, really. Uh, very onesie-twosie, if they existed at all. And all that stuff was hidden. All in the background. Never saw anything of it. So the whole thing is just dumb. That they were to have somebody who's just out there in the open in the 1800s saying, yeah, I'm, I'm tranny. So that's, well, that's one of the things I remember. The, the one thing I read on was that the person, the individual, the crackpot, uh, talking about being a witch the whole time, even though he's really a wizard, you know, that whole thing. But he's, yeah, my, my old classmates, they don't even recognize me anymore because they knew me when I was a wizard and not a witch. And whatever stupidness. You would never come out in the 1800s and say that, ever, because that was a great way to get you yourself ostracized pretty dang quick. Uh, people, and, and just to add on, <laughs> excuse me, just to add on to it, the ability to, you know, modify yourself, to, you know, go a little snippy snip here and there, and do some creepy uh, surgeries, wasn't really available then. I mean, that would freaking right up kill you. Uh, trying to pull some stunt like that. So there was no surgeries to turn you from dude to chick or chick to dude. Not that you really can change from dude to chick or chick to dude, but at least look different. 
Bash shenanigans wasn't near the level it is today, so no one even attempted it. So all they had available was cross-dressing. Yeah, that's really going to fly well. Anyhow. Anyhow. That piece right there. That single character in the game is the reason I won't buy the game now. That is the only reason I won't buy the game. I won't play it. I won't buy it. Because I do not want a transgender character forced onto a game. Now, there have been games I've played with transgender characters in them. Did I know they existed before I bought the game? No. If I had known they existed, would I have bought the game? Yeah, probably not. And the two that I can think of right off the top of my head, uh, Mass Effect 3 which technically had, no, that didn't have any trannies. That had uh, gay people, so not in there. Um, uh, so just one game I can think of off the top of my head for transgender was Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, I love the game other than that piece. And just like this, it's forced onto the game. It doesn't fit, and in fact... Assassin's Creed Syndicate falls roughly in the same timeline, 1800s. It's during the Industrial Revolution, so it still doesn't fly. All right, um, and that was the same issue I had with that game, is that nobody would be going out there doing this stuff openly, publicly. Now, technically, the character in there um, has done a... I'm not entirely sure how they set it up, when you look at the individual, they're dressed like a guy would be dressed, but you can tell it's a chick, especially when it speaks. And yes, I'm using the word it. If you want to go that route, you can just get called it. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it's a girl that thinks she's a guy. And I just it just felt like it was forced in there. It didn't really... Not that it was really ever... I mean, obviously it was mentioned like in the... In her little, because every character in there has got a biography. Um, so it was mentioned that she thinks she's tranny. Um, but her character in there really served no purpose. She was barely part of the storyline. All she did was really give you side quests. Um, and she never actually verbally said anything. There was no overarching story dealing with the fact that she's a tranny. No one mentioned you know, hey, you're a trainee, or whatever. It's just, yeah, it's here, and nobody cares. That's not going to happen. People will be... What the grief is this, you know? And the only other one that I can think of, some people might bring up transgenderism in uh, uh, another Assassin's Creed game, interestingly enough, but that was uh, 4, uh, Black Flag. Technically, that was not transgenderism. That was... Barely call it cross-dressing. She was disguising herself as a dude because that was the only way to do what she needed to get done. And then when that no longer mattered, then she ran around dressed as a chick. But anyhow. So why do I bring all this up? Do I bring it up because they're ruining Hogwarts by introducing a gay character? Or excuse me, a transgender character? No, I don't. Uh, in fact... Like I said, J.K. Rowling is right now taught... Or she has said in the past... Um, that, you know, again, she's she's okay with gays and, and lesbians, and in fact, even though it's never written in the books, she has come out and said, oh yeah, I always imagined, you know, when I was writing the character of Dumbledore, again, the headmaster, uh, that he was gay. And I went, um, that's a terrible idea. That's, that's terrible to, to come out and say that. Now, there is a scene, so to speak, it's not in the movies, uh, well, I mean, I guess the, the newer movies probably has it. I don't know, because I haven't seen the newer movies. I saw the the first one of the... Of the they're not even really prequels. I'm not entirely sure what you would call them. I saw the first one of them, thought it was pretty good, and never watched the rest because I didn't care. Uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of them. I don't like, or I don't dislike them. I mean, I own uh, all the movies. I own all the books. Um, of the Harry Potter stuff, not the, the extra weirdness. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going out there buying Hogwarts stickers. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care that much. Uh, I mean, I prefer, I prefer Star Wars over, over Hogwarts or over Harry Potter any day. Uh, but anyhow, so when she came out and said, oh yeah, Dumbledore's gay. I was like, 
that's a terrible plan because that turns Dumbledore into a groomer because he's constantly around uh, Harry Potter, the main character. And reading through the books, I actually had the thought, you know, maybe second or third read through, you know, realizing how much time he spent with Harry Potter. I was like thinking, you know, this could be, if you were to actually take this into a real world scenario, this could be seen as really weird that the headmaster would be focused on one person. And I don't mean, you know, in a queer way. I don't mean in a freak way. I just mean, you know, if you're the, the head of any school and you're focused on one person, unless it's your kid, in which case, you know, that doesn't count. But if you're focused on one person, that usually doesn't end up. Uh, I mean, usually does wind up being freaks. But, you, you know, you've got favoritism thrown out there or whatever. And nobody in the books said anything like that because Harry Potter was everybody's favorite because he was the one that survived Voldemort. This whole weird legacy thing. Who cares? So anyhow, why, again, going back, I said before, why is it that this video game is currently getting talked about? Why is this video game under attack? Well, it's not because it has a transgender character in it. It's because J.K. Rowling doesn't like transgenders. Even though the game straight up said, we're staying away from J.K. Rowling, she has nothing to do with this, there are people out there People who call themselves gamers, they aren't. Just face facts. They're not gamers, because gamers don't care. The rule, right? Um, and I will say, I am a gamer. The only reason I'm talking about this is because everybody else is talking about this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said anything, because I don't give a darn. But, uh, right now, there are people out there just going nuts over this gobbledygook. Uh, on which, funny enough, Gobbledygook is one of the languages in the Harry Potter uh, world. But anyhow, they're going absolutely nuts with a uh, a game that's based off of the creation of an individual who doesn't like trannies. Even though the game is supporting of trannies, they're just mad at it, and every, they say everybody should just not play the game. And I meant to make a meme and forgot to, but you've seen those... You know, we are not the same. Guys holding this tie. I thought about making one of those. And put, and I might put that as a uh, picture for this thing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but anyhow, you know, you, you won't buy the game because J.K. Rawlings is against trannies. I won't buy the game because there's a tranny in the game. We are not the same. That's what I want to make a meme on. Maybe I'll throw it out there. We'll see. But anyhow, um, there's... I was reading, of course, uh, Daily Wires, where I got the original story, and I dug into some things. And this is the one, I think, that really just ties up why everything's stupid. Uh, this this whole argument here. So, and of course, you know, I got dual screens going on. Hogwarts Legacy cannot, should not be judged solely on its own merits. Okay, full stop. Don't even go there. If you are a game, and this is, I can't remember what this chick's name is. I don't care. Some crackpot. Um, I will say that this individual identifies as transgender. I didn't really dig into if it's a guy who thinks he's a girl or a chick who she who thinks she's a guy. I don't know, don't care. But already reading about this individual tells me that this idiot, this is an idiot. This is a moron who doesn't know jack about jack. So this already tells me, just reading this one sentence, that this individual is an idiot. The whole purpose of a gaming review, or if you even want to call it a video game journalist, is to review a game based on its merits. You're not supposed to contain anything outside of the game with the exception of being faithful to whatever source material. So, for instance, if it's a sequel, how much is it like the original game? If it's something like Hogwarts Legacy, how much does it tie in with the rest of the, you know, if, if it's completely off base, you know, for instance, um, the wands are made out of steel or something you know that could be something that somebody could say well that doesn't work because it's that's not what wands are made out of whatever you know stuff like that you can make complaints you can make arguments there okay that's what you're supposed to be doing the merits of the game how fun is it uh how closely does it relate to other things in its own thing now if you're making a video game completely on its own like the first dishonored uh video game then you don't have anything to tie it to so that those are kind of the easiest reviews 
you can do literally just the game itself and nothing else. You're not supposed to worry about the creators of it. And in fact, this person starts off talking about, should you? Is it okay to do that? Well, I say no, because I'm a crackpot. Um, didn't actually say the word crackpot, but we all know that's what the idiot means. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy cannot, should not be judged solely on its own merits because the end result of supporting this game financially and socially isn't simply a matter of how much you'll enjoy it or how nostalgic it might be to experience the world of Harry Potter. It's the whole purpose of playing a video game, guys. It's to, for those who need nostalgia, it's there for nostalgia. For those who want fun, it's there for fun. For those who want to step into another world, it's to step into another world. Not according to this idiot. If you purchase this game, if you praise its qualities and encourage others to support the developers or treat yourself to a guilty pleasure, the purpose of video games, you are making a choice that will harm the transgender community whether you want to admit it or not. No. Sorry. Got to make the beepy thing stop beeping. Uh, no. Right here, and it's the next one, statement might seem like quite a stretch, going through the bullet points here. Let me, I'm just going to finish reading what this idiot says and then just sum it all up. Statement might seem like quite a stretch at first glance. It's quite a stretch even after you read her arguments. Or his. I'm not sure. Uh, but this... I feel like it's probably a girl thinking she's a guy because no guy would write like this. Uh, but, you know, if he's a guy thinking he's a girl, then, you know, maybe. But anyway, for the sake of clarity, well, let's break it down. It doesn't make it any clearer. If you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you're doing three significant things. You're directly supporting the royalty checks. Sorry. Uh, J.K. Rowling will receive for use of Harry Potter intellectual property. You're paying J.K. Rowling, who is evil. Okay, that's one thing. It's completely stupid. But it's one argument. Second argument. You're financially signaling to the wider market that the Harry Potter IP is a profitable space likely worth investing in with future titles. The more profitable the IP, the more money Rowling makes. So if you buy the game, Rowling gets more money. Also, if you buy the game, that'll mean that Rowling gets even more money later on. So it's really just one point. Uh, you're socially engaging with the IP and potentially broadening its audience, encouraging others to engage with it as well. This inevitably leads to more people being exposed to Rawlings' hateful beliefs and potentially adopting it themselves. Just, just give me a minute. Uh, to what level of stupidity does this sentence require to make sense? This literally makes no sense. If more people know about this game, this IP, if more people know about Harry Potter, then more people will likely become training haters. First. First. Who doesn't know about the Harry Potter world? I can tell you a few dozen people never read the books never seen the movies and know what harry potter is you can just say harry potter and they'll go oh yeah they'll know what it is it's like saying who's mickey mouse what's star wars to see the movies or read the books or play the video games or whatever they know what it is who doesn't know about harry potter probably some tribesmen out in africa and maybe not even that i don't know it's super famous so this argument literally makes no sense. You can't broaden its audience anymore unless you want to say uh, more people like it. whoop de do. Now, going further into that, if you are reading the stories, reading the books, the seeing the movies, playing the video games, nowhere in there does it have J.K. Rowling's beliefs, hateful beliefs doesn't have anything in there about transgenders. The only thing with transgenders in it at all is this new game. That's it. So anybody playing it, unless they're going out and... I don't know the author of... Do you know how many people really care about the author of anything? Very few. All right. Uh, let's go with some of the famous things. Star Wars. George Lucas. Star Wars fans, most of them, have... Probably no idea nor concern 
about what political standpoint George Lucas has on anything. For or against abortion, for or against trannies, for or against, you know, whatever. Global warming, that's a good one. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. He's probably liberal on all of them because, you know, he's from Hollywood, but nobody knows. Nobody cares. We want to watch Star Wars. Uh, Marvel. Marvel comic books. Great idea. You know, Stan Lee just died a few years ago. Or is his political leanings? Who knows? Who cares? Could I find out? Sure. But is that going to make me adopt him because Stan Lee's that way? No. Freaking care. I want to read his stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think. I had some other ones in there. Uh, well, the other, the ones that people compare Harry Potter to, right? You've got uh, Chronicles of Narnia, written by C.S. Lewis. What was his political views on things? Well, I know he was Christian. I think he'd be, if I remember right, he converted to Catholicism on his deathbed. He was probably against transgenderism, but again, nobody cares. Nobody knows what it was. Nobody cares. J.R.R. Tolkien, the guy who wrote the uh, Lord of the Rings books. Think he was Catholic? Don't remember if he was Catholic. Because guess what? It's not important. It's not important to the story at all. Doesn't matter what his political viewpoints were. It doesn't add to the story. Uh... George Martin, George R. R. Martin, George R. Martin, I can't remember what his middle initial thing is. Um, the guy who wrote, uh, oh, I just lost it, Game of Thrones. Has nothing to do with the storyline. Whatever his viewpoints on life, whatever his beliefs, nothing to do with the story. And no, just in case anybody's concerned, I have not watched it, I refuse to watch it, because, ew. Alright, that's Straight up porn. That's disgusting. I'm not watching that garbage. I don't care what people say. There's no reason for it. So, regardless of who likes what books, what movies, what TV shows, anything, nobody cares about what the person's views are when they read the books or watch the movies. You give it a darn. It's stupid. Games Hub, who is the... organization that this author is writing for, this supposed journalist, has already d detailed a small sample of the extensive transphobic rhetoric that Rawlings spreads to her audience, as well as the comfort and support she draws from the royalties accrued by the use of Harry Potter IP. I didn't go looking for whatever it was, but on my many, many, many hours of research, I can tell you this. That's BF. I don't know anything about any extensive transphobic rhetoric she spreads, other than she calls them out on being stupid. Um, let's see. Sorry, my screen went to sleep. Uh, comfort and support she draws from the royalties. She makes a lot of money. And in fact, that was one of those little uh, double-down things that she did. I thought it was like, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty gutsy. I like it. Uh, but, uh, Somebody, you know, on a fit, on a tirade, whatever. It's like, how do you sleep at night? And uh, she went, pretty good. I have a, I have all the money I've made. has put me into a pretty nice house. And I sleep pretty good. Thanks for asking. Oh, oh, they were so bad. How dare you? You're sleeping good at night by hating the trannies. No, she, she doesn't sleep good at night by hating trannies despite hating trannies, or has any correlation with hating trannies. In fact, as far as I know, she doesn't actually hate transgender people. In fact, I'm pretty sure she started off the whole thing by saying, I don't hate them. I love everybody. Right? That's the favorite phrase. I love everybody. But just transgender was just dumb. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. It is a fact that she leverages her wealth and platform to support transphobic legislation. Her platform? You mean Twitter? That's all she's got. Uh, her wealth? E no. I don't even know if she's done any actual uh, legislation helped out with any. She might. I don't know. Uh, and that hate groups use her name to muster support for openly transphobic movements. A. I don't know of any transphobic uh, movements or hate groups dealing with this. 
don't think she's a part of any, and don't know any of the groups they're mentioning, uh, that uses her name as a reason to go on hating trannies. I'm pretty sure, if anything, it's just like, hey, look, she doesn't like trannies either, woohoo! And then when went off like, I don't think they're, like, building a shrine to her. Uh, do 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 I don't need to prove that she's a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. She is openly identified with the label. You mean the label that's really stupid? You mean the label that any good person wouldn't care about? They're like, yes, bring it on. It's just dumb. You know, somebody comes, one of my uh, things my dad loves to say, you're homophobic. I'm not homophobic. Never met a queer I was afraid of. It's just what the way he is, right? Yeah, but you know, when people call me transphobic or they call me uh, racist or sexist or whatever, all right, fine, I'm racist, now what? Fine, I'm sexist, now what? It's a title. It's wrong. It's completely inaccurate, but it doesn't matter. It's just a, here we go, here's a, 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 a title to slap on someone just so that we can, you know, try to drag them through the mud. doesn't mean anything if you don't let it mean anything. Buying Hogwarts Legacy gives Rowling financial support and risks broadening her audience. Yeah, her audience ain't gonna get much bigger, sorry. These actions are both harmful to the, the transgender community. Wait, both harmful? Oh, hold on. That was a poorly written sentence. I should have read that better. Both of these actions are harmful towards the transgender community. See what I'm talking about with horrible writing here? Economic influence is very real and growing ever more overt in the video game industry. Okie dokie. Let's go back here to the fact that I just brought up they're bringing more and more trainees into video games. Just remembered another one with trainees in it. Uh, Assassin's Creed. Again, Assassin's Creed. Must be Ubisoft's love here. Uh, Valhalla. Assassin's Creed, another, the reason I won't get that game is because they got bi's, they got gays, they got all of them, I think they got tranny, I don't remember, and they force you to be that. You're all of them. I don't know how you can be all of them, but that's beside the point. They force it on you. You, you have no choice. What? No. Uh, video games right now are very much trying to be inclusive. Uh, Battlefield 2042 introduced a character that they insisted was non-binary. It's a girl. It's straight up a girl. It is easily identifiable as a girl by any metric. Other than, you know, checking her DNA because it's a bunch of ones and zeros. There's no DNA to check. But it's a girl. No. It. She's non-binary. I think they even have in there she. No, a few times I, I, I do remember they keep saying they. I got very confused when I first read it. They. What are they talking about? And I found out. It says girl. I keep saying she, she's non-binary. No, she's a girl. All right. Stop it. Uh, very real, growing ever more overt. So, yes, there's economic influence, and the economic influence is put more trainees in there because we think it'll make the game better, and then more people won't buy it because it's stupid and they don't want it in there. But anyway. Think of how many microtransactions we're seeing stuffed into games with no need for them. We don't need microtransactions in game. We don't need them, but it makes the company money because people will be dumb enough to buy this junk. Hey, if you're dumb enough to buy it, you know, it's it, fool and his money are soon part, right? Shut the heck up, stupid. How many companies attempted to make NFTs only thwarted by massive outcry and financial refusal from con consumers? Okay, that's, you know, pretty true, but, eh. The money you spend has an impact. Your actions have consequences. You buy Hogwarts Legacy. You provide support that harms the transgender community. Okay, this is the most important out of all of this. You ready? Where's the harm? Seriously, all the time we have all this stuff, every time this stuff comes up, they're harming the transgender community. Who and how? The only thing I was reading through, I had screenshotted just that part because that was the only part I cared about. The rest was stupid. I mean, this thing was stupid too, but anyhow. There's harm. There's harm involved. The, the trannies are being attacked. By whom? 
Nobody. Nobody's harming them. Oh, they're they're being restricted in the United States. No, no. The only restrictions going on in the United States right now is uh. Let's see. Oh, that's right. We're not gonna let them transgender kids. We're gonna let the kids figure out whether or not they're trannies as adults before we start causing these problems. Which, by the way, in case anybody needs to know, there's no such thing as transgender. You cannot switch genders unless you're a frog. Throwing it out there. There might be one or two other species of animal that can do that under certain ex uh, conditions. But anyhow, it, it's it's not a thing. It's not possible. It's not scientifically possible. There's doctors out there now finally admitting to it. Yeah, it'll take a while for this to catch up. This is just this is insane. This is absolutely dumb. So anyhow, there you have it. Hogwarts Legacy is evil because it's attached to J.K. Rowling. Not because the game actually says anything about trannies, other than we want trannies in here. Because it's not like you're blasting the tranny to pieces or anything. I'm assuming the tranny is a, a good guy, or is it good girl? Really good guy, um, or probably neutral because it's in a PC. Nothing negative, as far as I can tell, by anything I've read about this tranny character in the game. It's dumb, but of course, why be happy? The transgender community is upset because they are crazy. The definition of being transgender is to be crazy, to think that you are somebody you're not. Um, and I know YouTube's going to have this video pulled 50 ways to Sunday because of all the things I'm saying in here. I don't give a darn. Uh, but we're going to have all these people out there say, stating that there's hate on here when there's no evidence of it. There's no proof that there's any hate in this video game whatsoever for any demographic of people. So it has to be banned because J.K. Rowling is attached to it. And you can never, ever refix that harm unless, of course, J.K. Rowling apologizes and kowtows and, you know, sends money off to whatever transgender charity group. All right? But th these guys are, like I said, they're nuts. The, the whole rainbow crowd is absolutely nuts. They're certifiably nuts. And the more nutty they are, the more stuff like this they spew because they are so hateful to themselves. They're so angry with themselves that they can't see straight. They can't think straight, and they have to push that out on somebody else. And to be perfectly honest, if there was a whole lot of emotion in me on feeling sorry for people, you know, having a heart, stuff like that, I probably would feel sorry for some of these guys. That, that they have to deal with this. That there's all this anger and vitriol that they carry all the time. Because that is, that is exhausting to be that angry all the time. And the only person you have to blame for it is yourself.